Hey everyone, welcome back to Northeast Wisconsin Technical College. Matt Schmelzer here, uh, working with Practical Machinist. Uh, today uh, we're out in the shop here and uh, we're looking at our milling vices today. Uh, every so often we go through and do uh, just a rebuild, refurbish on these, uh, just to make sure all the components are in safe working condition. Uh, so today I'm going to go through the process of uh, pulling this uh, vise apart, going through an inspection on all the components, and then reassembly. Uh, so over on the side here, I just got uh, some of the tools that we're going to be working with today. Um, I do have uh, just a set of uh, standard uh, hex keys. Um, I have a ratchet with uh, the correct hex socket. Uh, just a little scribe point to help us with some of the uh, O-rings inside of here. A uh, hammer and a chisel. And then of course a dead blow hammer for some of our more delicate parts. So let's go ahead and get started taking this vise apart. First step uh, to taking our vise apart here is I'm going to start off by removing my jaws. Uh, now these are just a special type of uh, quick jaws here. Uh, just loosen the cap screws and they'll slide out. I don't have to completely remove the cap screws. Uh, sometimes uh, we get into a situation, this is the screw that we're actually using for these jaws. And sometimes the socket, the hex socket in these screws gets stripped out. Um, you know, of course we use a, uh, a hex socket to remove these on a ratchet. Uh, so sometimes what'll happen is as you go to loosen that, this will pop out if that hex gets a little bit oblonged or stripped out. Uh, just a quick little technique for that is a lot of times I'll engage uh, the key with the uh, cap screw and I'll just put a little bit of tension on it with the movable jaw just to uh, prevent the hex key from popping out of there. So just a little bit of tension and now I can break that loose. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to uh, remove bo both of my jaws. We'll move on to the next step. So I went ahead and I uh, removed my vice jaws. Uh, and again, you can see this uh, one cap screw that holds that jaw on. That was, the hex was very rounded out and damaged. Uh, so using that technique by just kind of pinching the, uh, the ratchet in place just to keep that hex key from popping out of there helped us get that off. Uh, plus there was some rust on the threads. Uh, we'll definitely address that issue when we go to reassemble this vise. So the next step here is uh, to remove our movable portion of the uh, vise here. This is our movable jaw. On the back side, right in the center of it, uh, there is a set screw. And I'm just gonna use just a regular hex key and I'm gonna back that set screw out. And this is what holds this movable jaw to the assembly. So I don't need to completely remove it uh, to remove this movable jaw, but I'm going to go ahead and take it all the way out uh, so I can get in and clean the thread. So just a few rotations, it's going to pull this set screw out. I can set that aside and now our movable jaw will lift off. Now when we're pulling this movable portion out, you want to be very careful on every one of these uh, milling vices. Deep inside here, there is a spherical or a semi-spherical bearing, uh, which I will pull out of there also. That you don't want this falling across the floor and getting lost. So I'll set that off to the side. And this component here, basically ready to get washed up. I'll remove these screws and over to the parts washer. So we'll go on to the next step. So the next uh, part to remove is down on the end of the vise here. Now this may vary from one vise to the other. This, uh, this company here makes just a, a large variety of different configurations. But on this one here, um, we have on the very end is our thrust lock nut. And this is kind of what controls the uh, preload on the lead screw of this vise. So there's four screws on there. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and loosen these screws. I'm not going to take them completely out and then I'll be able to rotate that uh, thrust jam nut off of there. And I'll show you that uh, once I get this removed, how it works. The final component uh, was our lead screw here of our vise. Now that was connected to our movable portion here, which connected to the movable jaw. Uh, all that really took was just simply thread that component out. Uh, it only comes out uh, through the this end of the vise here towards the hex side. So I went ahead and removed that. Uh, again, there's an O-ring on here to prevent any kind of coolant from getting back towards that thrust bearing assembly. And then on this portion here, um, we have these little seals on the end, these brush seals. 
uh, with the new rebuild kit that uh, is furbished by the company, we'll go ahead and replace those. Uh, there is one on each side. So in order to assist me with doing that, I'm going to take this over to the bench vise and I'll grab my chisel and my hammer and we'll pop these seals out. So at this point, we have our mill vise completely disassembled, all the components laid out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start taking these over to our parts washer. We're going to get rid of all the metal chips in here, uh, degrease everything and uh, get everything ready for inspection. We'll come back to the bench here and we'll do just a quick preliminary inspection on some things, maybe address some issues, and we'll go from there. Now, after uh, determining the exact model of this vise that I'm using here, uh, I was able to contact our supplier. Uh, we do got a nice rebuild kit from them, which supplies, of course, our new brush seals, uh, our thrust washer and thrust bearing. Uh, the two O-rings that are required for this vise, and of course our bearing for our movable jaw. I also went ahead and I ordered some new cap screws. These are special cap screws for our vise jaws that we're using on this machine. So after we have our components in place, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just do just a quick inspection on our vise itself. Uh, you know, just like any time we go to mount this onto the machine, of course, I'm just going to take a honing stone, go over this nice machine surface to make sure there's no nicks or burrs, uh, anything like that. You know, our accuracy of our parts starts with the vise, and the foundation is the base of the vise right here. So once I get that stone down and flat, I'll go ahead and I'll flip this vise around and look at our mating surfaces with our movable jaw. Of course, we have the ways of the vise here. Um, one thing uh, we may want to look into if we start to see uh, some severe galling or nicks or burrs or even tool marks for, for that sake, uh, we may want to consider taking this over to a surface grinder and refurbishing these surfaces. Uh, just a real light cleanup just to ensure they're flat. After a while, these ways tend to uh, wear in at a certain point. Uh, you know, again, we may get some nicks or burrs. So at this point, uh, I went ahead and did that already. Ours are well within specifications, so we'll go through and stone those surfaces. So moving forward to the inside of the vise or the inside of the ways here, we do have some machine surfaces in between the ways and also underneath the ways. So I'll go ahead and I'll do a, just a light stone across the inside of the ways. And then of course, coming up from underneath, with the honing stone and get that bottom side of the ways. Uh, these two surfaces are gonna correlate with this movable portion that connects to the movable jaws. Of course, we have a machine surface here that mates against the inside of the ways and this surface here across the bottom. So I'll do the same thing. Uh, one thing you can see, uh, there is some uh, slight damage to this component here. You can see some rough spots. Uh, that's some metal chips getting plugged up underneath and getting run between these two surfaces. So even a light surface grind or a, a hone on these surfaces too to make sure we don't have any raised edges. Uh, we want to make sure we get this nice and flat. Uh, that's going to make sure this part runs nice and smooth within the assembly. So I'll go through and hone those surfaces. We'll move on to the next step. Next we're looking at the movable jaw portion of the assembly. Uh, again, you can see a little bit of damage here from some milling cutters. Uh, I, I want to make sure I go ahead and stone or even light surface grind the edges that meet up with the vise jaws themselves. That's going to ensure that our vise jaws sit nice and flat, perpendicular, parallel on this device. Uh, also, the machine surfaces that made against the ways of the body there, the body assembly, I'll make sure I stone those down. There's no nicks or burrs on there and ensure that those are nice and clean. Uh, the next step too is to look at our threads. This is where our uh, cap screws fasten to to hold our jaws on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run a tap through there to remove any kind of rust or grease or grime and I'll do that to both sides. Once I'm finished with that, uh, we can move on to our next step, which is the lead screw. And really a simple component, just to make sure there's no galled surfaces on any portion. Uh, looking at our bearing end of the lead screw, uh, that all looks in good shape. Uh, ensure I don't have any damage on my threads. I may have to take a thread file to uh, clean up any damage on the threads. And then look for any kind of grease or rust buildup inside of there. Just a quick wire brush. 
Another thing I want to make sure is down on the end where the O-ring seats and this groove. I want to make sure I remove any kind of sharp edge from that O-ring groove so I don't end up damaging my O-ring on assembly also. I'm going to go ahead and address all those issues. We'll start in the assembly process. Moving on to assembly, uh, first thing I'm going to do is take this movable portion that connects to our movable jaw. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and install my seals here, my brush seals. Uh, pretty simple uh, set forth. There is a little split on the end that makes it a little bit easier to install these. But uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and insert that split end into the counter bore first with my fingers. And a lot of times it's just a press in, sometimes a very light tap into place. Now, as easy as that went in, it can come out just as easy. So from the factory, they actually stake that seal in place so it doesn't uh, pop out of there. So this one went in fairly easy. I'm going to go ahead and just take my chisel and just create a small little stake mark at just a few increments around the perimeter of this seal. And that's going to prevent that from coming out. So one more over on this side. So once that's staked in place, it won't get uh, popped out of there by the rotation of the lead screw. I'll go ahead and flip it over and do the opposite side and this part's ready to go in the vise. Next part of the assembly is looking at our lead screw. Uh, again, we went ahead, did an inspection cleanup on it. I've already installed our new O-ring and I went ahead and got some Chucky's grease uh, on the threads to help lubricate our threads and put just a little small amount of that on that O-ring. That's gonna prevent it from tearing as I go to assemble this into the body. So the next step here is to take our lead screw and I'm gonna thread it into the movable portion of the jaw there. So I'll go ahead and get that assembled. So I went ahead and I assembled our lead screw into our movable portion here. Again, I went a, took a little bit of our Chucky's grease along those mating components to the body just to lubricate that, prevent it from seizing or galling at all. So this component is ready to go into the body. Before I install that, I gotta go ahead and install our thrust washer assembly or thrust bearing assembly. So it's gonna go together in order. I'm gonna start off with a hardened thrust washer that goes down into the body first. And then I'll put the bearing on top of that. And then of course, another thrust washer on top of the bearing. So basically we are trapping our bearing in between two hardened thrust washers. Before I install these, I'm gonna give them a light coat of uh, Chucky's grease and uh, go ahead and assemble those into the body. So the next step in the assembly is gonna take my movable portion. I'm gonna go ahead and insert this into the vise very carefully. And as this lead screw starts to protrude through the other end, I wanna make sure that I don't end up pushing my thrust bearing out of location. So just kind of seat that in. Uh, you may have to give this a very light tap to get that O-ring to seat in. Uh, this one went in fairly easy. So now I can go ahead and move over to the other side. The next step once this movable assembly is installed is to take our thrust bearing jam nut here and get this into place. So I'm going to go ahead and slide that over the end of the lead screw and I just took two of my locking nut screws just to help me rotate this component. Again, this may get a little snug as that O-ring starts to seat into that counter bore. And I'll run this nut all the way up to the face of the thrust washer, putting a little bit of tension on the thrust bearing. So couple of rotations it's going to draw that in place and now I'm up against the face of my thrust washer. Now uh, there really is no exact specification on how much uh, pressure we're going to put on that thrust bearing inside there. We don't want too much it'll end up damaging the bearing. Too little we're going to have a lot of slop and a lot of movement in there. Um, so for this case um, what I have is just an inch pound torque wrench and I set this to approximately five to six inch pounds of torque. And that's what I'm gonna use as the drag measurement on this screw. So I'm just gonna rotate this and when I feel my torque wrench engage, I'll tighten it a little bit more, a little bit more. And there I have my seven pounds, or seven inch pounds of torque on that bearing. I don't wanna put any more, again, I'll end up damaging it. 
and that's going to put just the right amount of tension on my lead screw to not damage it, not to have excessive clearance. So once I have that uh, thrust washer nut in the right position, I'm going to go ahead and remove these two cap screws that I use to assist. And now I can go ahead and install the jam nut. Again, all this nut does is it prevents that uh, thrust washer nut from loosening up or tightening as you rotate the lead screw. So what I gotta do is I'm gonna rotate this up until it hits the face of that thrust washer nut. And then again, if the holes don't line up as this is snug, I may have to back it out between a quarter turn to a half a turn so the screws line up and then I can insert all four cap screws. Once I tighten those down, it's just gonna cinch the threads up just enough to keep that from backing off. So moving forward to our movable jaw of our vise here, um, I went ahead and took the liberty on the back side of the vise jaw here, not too often used is these two tapped holes here. Uh, again, that gives us an option to put a vise jaw on the back side if we need to increase our capacity. Um, I went ahead and put some set screws in there uh, that's just going to keep any kind of chips or coolant or debris from collecting in there. If it ever comes to the point where you need to utilize those holes, you don't have to spend a lot of time cleaning those. So I just plugged them with some set screws. <clears throat> Next is our uh, spherical bearing here, our spherical segment. Uh, this gets placed uh, on the back side of this little ledge here in the vise jaw itself. And there's a small semi-spherical pocket. Uh, what I did is I just put a liberal amount of grease down inside there and that's going to hold this in place as I flip this thing upside down to install it on the vise. So I'll go ahead and stick that in there with the spherical side into the pocket and I'll just compress it into the grease a little bit and that's going to hold that thing in place so it doesn't fall out of there. Sometimes a challenge to keep that in place. So just a little bit of grease. So now I can go ahead and bring this thing over to my vise and I'll just set it on to that hook and seat it towards the back. So there is some adjustment in here and that's what's pushing on that spherical bearing in there. So the last component is gonna be our set screw on the back side here that we took out to remove that jaw. So I'm gonna go ahead and just insert that set screw now. And I'm gonna bring this thing up until it is snug against that back side of that hook. So I'm just going to rotate this until it is snug. So right now I have no movement at all, so it's perfectly snug. At that point, I'm going to back it off one quarter turn. And that's going to give me the right amount of tension in here, but still allow this jaw to float and conform to an irregular surface or maybe an ununiform surface. So you bring it tight back it off a quarter of a turn. That's gonna hold this thing in place, but still allow it to move a small amount. Now there may be times where you might want to maybe snug it up a little bit more. If you have excessive movement, where maybe it's lifting the part off of your parallels or any kind of fixturing where it may move it. You may want to put a little bit more tension on there, but usually we don't back it off any more than a quarter of a turn. So that's your adjustment on that movable jaw. So we'll leave it set at there. I'll go ahead and I'll get my jaws put in place and this thing's ready to go into service. So we got our jaws installed, everything is kosher, our, our vise is adjusted properly, this thing's ready to go onto the milling machine. So rebuilding a vise today, I want to thank you guys for joining us. Uh, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button below, otherwise we'll see you next time.